in what would easily pass as the middle of nowhere in Tanzania lie the stories and the remains of some of South Africa's freedom fighters. Welcome to Mazimbu, west of Tanzania's capital, Dar es Salaam. You are at the University of Sokoine's Solomon Matlangu campus. Mina, umkopi, niafuna, ngeshala mazimbu, ngeshala umandela dei, iwe mnandi. It is here that we meet Ali Mkopa. Mkopa was here as a small boy when the first batch of ANC freedom fighters arrived here, seeking political asylum. They were on the run from the apartheid regime. Tanzania's then president, Julius Nyerere, offered them land. The ANC came here in 1978, 1979, and in 1980. At that time, the place, a sisal plantation, was known as Mazimbu. Here, the freedom fighters started life anew. At least five districts in Tanzania became their home. They really had no hope of going back home. They felt at home here. The situation at home sometimes made it look like they would never return. 21 countries contributed to ensuring their stay in Tanzania was comfortable and meaningful. Mazimbu also served as a political strategy center of sorts for the freedom fighters. Some of the top ANC officials then and now, as well as men and women who went on to lead South Africa after independence, spent the better part of their lives and that of the liberation struggle here in Mazimbu. Many South African leaders were here and some came back since they left in 1992. Oliver Tambo was their leader. In fact, he's the one who lived here longer. Langu was executed in 1979, a year after the first ANC liberators had landed here in Tanzania in a place called Mazimbu. In his honor, this institution was renamed. To date, it is known as the Solomon Matlangu Campus. The Solomon Matlangu Freedom College, SOMAFCO, was set up for the growing number of ANC exiles coming just after the 1976 Soweto uprising. Its aim was to offer better quality education, different from what Africans received under the apartheid regime. Over time, SOMAFCO became too small to accommodate the growing number and the needs of exiles, and so Tanzania offered them more land, 7,500 acres here in Dakawa. <laughs> Dakawa Development Center, 55 kilometers from Mazimbu, was a transition center for the exiles as they awaited to join Somafco for formal education. Dakawa also served as an orientation and rehabilitation center for exiles returning from Mozambique and Swaziland. As a development center, it offered more than formal education. It catered for those in need of vocational training, including carpentry, metal, and leather work. They had so many activities, activities of a person who is at his or her home. They were doing agriculture, they were having schools, they were having uh, vocational training. Dakawa was seen as a difficult place, prone to flooding and malaria. Most of them uh, died on malaria and other factors, uh, accidents. To date, the remains of those who died during the time in Tanzania lay in cemeteries at the various sites in the country. <laughs> In 1990, Nelson Mandela was set free. The mood and the dreams at the camps changed. Ali remembers celebrations that lasted for two days here in Mazimbu. Mandela came here and even spent the night in the camp. He told the exile South Africa would be free and they too would be back home. In 1992, two years before South Africa's independence, the final call was made. It was time to close the ANC camps and go back home. Oliver Tambo, the then ANC president, had the task of handing each of the five centers back to the Tanzanian government. After leaving, they handed everything to the Tanzanian government and to where there was a school, we are using it as a school. To where it was a dispensary, we are using it as a dispensary. So MAFCO existed for only 15 years, 15 years that may have defined the future of a free South Africa's education system. Sarah Kimani, SABC News, Morogoro, Tanzania.